I will be teaching you guys how to set up WireGuard VPN on your Amada software controllers, and this should work across the different VPN routers, assuming that the hardware and firmware supports WireGuard. The Amada software controller should be the same across them. In this particular video, I'm using an ER8411, but again, it should be the same setup on the different routers, assuming they support it. So we're gonna take a look at a simple diagram where I am pretending to be at a hotel and I have three VLANs, one of which a server lives on that I'm trying to access. The server's VLAN is 192.168.10 and that is where the server lives. And of course we're using WireGuard to access the resources on that server. And let's go ahead and take a look at how to set up WireGuard VPN itself. Starting from the dashboard page, we'll go down to the bottom left and click on settings. And then we'll go to VPN, WireGuard, and we're gonna create a new WireGuard interface. We're gonna call this one SPX Labs HQ. You can call it home, server, work, whatever you'd like. Um, this is just what I'm calling mine. And now we're gonna give it a completely unique subnet and IP address. For the subnet, we're gonna to stick to the a similar convention that I am using. But just to give you an idea of some uh, th subnets that you can use, you can use 10.10.10, .10 or you can use 172.16.18, or 172.16.0. It doesn't actually matter what you use, so long as the subnet is completely unique from any of your existing subnets. So if you remember, my existing subnets are 192.168.20.10 and .0. So I'm gonna use 192.168.69 because 69 does not exist. And I'm gonna give it a unique IP address of 10. This part is pretty important that this is unique. Uh, you can give it .1 if you want or .2 or .3 or whatever, but I'm gonna start at .10 because I don't know, it's easy for me to remember and I just wanna avoid as many issues as possible. So click on apply and now we have created our WireGuard interface. The next thing we're gonna do is actually open up WireGuard so we can manage our tunnels. So in here, we're gonna add a new empty tunnel and let's give it a name. I'm gonna call it SPX Labs Home. You can name it whatever you want. Uh, the name doesn't actually matter. Just something that you would be easily able to identify that you're trying to connect to your equipment, your Amata equipment. For the next part, we're gonna add address. The next line is gonna be address. And this is going to be the address you want to assign your client. So in this case, my MacBook Pro is going to be assigned the IP address 192.168.69.11. And we're gonna say slash 24. Uh, so it'll have that unique IP address within that subnet. And we do want us to have easy access to the internet. So I'm gonna add a DNS of 1.1.1.1. .1 .1 .1. One. I don't know how many ones I said there, but only four ones. You can, of course, add multiple if you'd like with a uh, with a comma and, you know, add 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 Whatever you want to do, it's not necessary, but there you go. Just, just inf more information than you probably wanted. Next, we're going to add a section for the peer and we're going to add public key. So in this case, the peer is going to be our server. And to find this public key, we simply go back to WireGuard where we just created our interface. We're gonna copy the public key here. Let's go back to managing our tunnel and we're gonna paste that there. Next, we're gonna to want to say allowed IPs. This part's pretty important. Uh, I'm gonna do 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0. So basically what this means is that I will be able to access every single subnet that I have created. In this case, there's going to be three, uh, .20, .10, and .0, like I talked about earlier. You could limit this to specific subnets if you want, but just for ease and demonstrative purposes, I'm not gonna do that in this video. Next, we're gonna say endpoint equals, and this is gonna be your public or WAN IP address. You can find this by opening a new tab or using Google search and saying, what is my IP? What is my IP? And then you can take whatever it gives you and copy that and paste that into our configuration here. And we're gonna to wanna to say colon 51820. Wow, I cannot type 51820. And that is the default port that WireGuard uses in the Amata controller setup. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have this port forwarded on your router. If for whatever reason you can't access your WireGuard connection, 
it's probably because this port is blocked on your router. Now I can't show you how to do that because every router is different, but in my case, I already have this port forwarded um, to 192.168.69.11, or I'm sorry, dot .10, not dot .11. Um, okay, now you can also do something cool here. If you have your own domain name, you could do spxlabs.com like I do. Uh, so I'm gonna leave that as spxlabs.com because that is a domain name I own and that's where everything reaches out to. And we can go ahead and hit save from here and we are good to go. You can ignore that error that you just saw. That should not normally happen. Um, but nonetheless, uh, we have now done that. So now we're gonna wanna set up our peer. So our peer you can think of as every single individual device that you want to allow access. So if you have a phone, you're gonna to wanna to create a new peer for your phone. If you have a MacBook or a laptop, whatever it may be, each one of those devices need to have their own peer created. Now I'm gonna show you how to do this one time with my MacBook Pro. So we're gonna create new, we're gonna say SPX MacBook Pro because that is the peer that I want to have or the client that I want to have access to my home network when I'm out at a coffee shop. We're gonna hit SPX Labs HQ. That's the interface that we just created. We're gonna leave endpoint and endpoint port blank. For allow IP addresses, we're gonna enter in the .11 address that I just created. So 192.168.11. And we're gonna give this a 32. So only that specific uh, IP address is allowed access. Now for public key, we're gonna go back to our configuration here. So this is the tunnel we just created. We're gonna copy this public key and paste that into there. So each one of your clients should have their own unique public key, and you're gonna to want to create a new peer for each one of your clients, whether it be an iPhone, laptop, another laptop, desktop, whatever it is. And we can click okay here. And now we're ready to go ahead and connect. So let me go ahead and change networks, because that is important. And now you can see my IP address has changed. That's because I'm on a different network. I am now uh, using my phone's network so I can access or pretend that I am remote. So now let's go ahead and click on activate. And this might take a moment, but there should be a handshake that takes place here. So we're just gonna give this a moment to try and connect. Okay, you can see that I have a handshake and this should update every, I think 25 seconds or so. Uh, whatever the default value is set inside of Amada. And now that that's good to go, let's go back to our controller. And we can actually do something cool and go to Insights. Click on VPN Status, click on the WireGuard VPN tab. And we can actually see that I am connected uh, via this remote IP address uh, to our Amada network. So the next thing we're gonna do is actually access our server. Now to do that, I already know the IP address of my server. This is gonna be pretty highly unique to everyone, but in this case, it's on the .10 network and the IP address is 192.168.10.25 and bam. So now I have access to the server that I wanna access remotely and we could you know, literally do anything from here if I, yeah, we could literally do anything from here. We can access um, my server, if I had a SMB share, I would be able to access it. I could SSH into the server if I wanted. I literally have full access to the server. So I would say that is mission accomplished. One thing I also wanted to do while we are here is just show you the setup that I have and to show you that we don't need any access controls um, in order to make any of this work. By default, TP-Link allows routing between all subnets. So there's nothing that you need to do. We don't have any ACL set up. This all just works default out of the box. And you know, it's, it's good to go. And again, if you wanted to limit some access to some of the other subnets, you would of course uh, change your allowed IPs um, to whatever subnet that you wanted. And that's pretty much it. It was pretty simple, right? Well, it's simple when you know what you're doing anyway. <laughs> Hopefully this video was very simple to understand and easy to follow. And if not, feel free to drop some comments below and I will do my best to answer any questions you may have, but I can't promise you I will answer them perfectly. With all that being said, I wanna thank each and every one of you for watching and I'll see you next time.